Hello, this is Yanis from Unrepair. Today we will go through a repair for an HP ProBook 635 Aero G7 that came to our lab dead. This is a very weird uh, situation. You can see it in the diagnosis and stay with us for the repair. Here is the board. It has a white light. We unplug the charger. We plug it back. The board is blinking and nothing happens that's the attitude of this uh, board uh, that's uh, what uh, we must uh, solve let's go and see at first uh, what we have done with this board we have done a lot we have uh, searched a lot since there are no schematics and uh, there are no board view for this uh, board we have done a lot of research we have done a lot of work and uh, let's go and see uh, what we have uh, done and what we have decided to do in order to fix the problem this is the charging ic uh, we will uh, spill a little isopropylic alcohol in order for you to see the details uh, of the board the scratches the scratch marks the cuts uh, that uh, we have done on it in order to determine uh, what is uh, going on we wanted to investigate uh, the situation that uh, appears here the board is dead uh, is dead is not turning on and uh, we have no acok -okay. acok -okay is a signal that is uh, a requirement for uh, the board to power on with the charger we can see that uh, we are having uh, a scratched uh, line because we wanted to determine where is the the trace uh, is going under this white uh, mask and we have uh, scratched the the line we have uh, checked the pull up resistor for the 3.3 volts uh, we have followed the line in some diodes and some other things that uh, are connecting we have the pulling uh, we have the pull up here and no voltage the voltage is dropping on the acok and uh, all this line is acok line that connects to this double mosfet and uh, mosfet uh, diode sorry and what we have we have done we have cut the ac line in uh, divisions so uh, the first was uh, the ac okay that uh, is uh, sharing with a with a pull up resistor and the second one the second cut was uh, in the line that is this one that connects the diodes with the pull up so we have uh, three divisions to check one was the acok by itself the other was the acok and uh, the pull up resistor and the other one was uh, from the pull up resistor to the other components that are connecting diode and uh, uh, transistor or MOSFET I don't think uh, that matters so everything was clean and clear but the ACOK that uh, connects to something this something as all we know uh, it is the super IO everything was clean instead of the super io that is a super io it's a bga one and when i press it down i'm pressing down with my finger you can see that it is powering on so this is a faulty ic or it it needs reballing since it's a bga chip so what would we do is that uh, we must uh, remove this IC and if we check before removing it 
the AC OK, it is high, it is 3 volts. That is the signal that we need in order for the board to power on. And we have a right signal, of course, because the Super I.O. is not dropping the signal. So, the Super I.O. must be removed, replaced, but first we will try to reboil it and check if uh, the things will be better. Okay, this uh, Super I.O. is removed off camera, I'm terribly sorry, didn't press the record button. That is the alignment, the dot to the pointer. So, what we must do, we will go very, very quickly and uh, clean up the pads from the solder, the old solder. And uh, then we will try and uh, reboil the Super IO chip with a universal stencil, not a universal, with a, whatever we have in our arsenal that fits. So let's go add some flux and with our hot air gun and our soldering wick, we'll clean up these pads. We're trying not to use uh, our uh, soldering pen with a wick because we can uh, scratch the pads and not the pads cannot be scratched but the mask around them can be scratched and uh, that could be a problem when soldering since the pads are not even with the soldering wick and the hot air we were using our soldering pen and we will pay for it we will clean up a bit we will try to make the pads even flat nice and flat we will use extra flux and extra wick an extra soldering pen and extra scratches on the board that's okay we are used to it but lazy enough to try to avoid it we're wiping the old solder in order for the pads to be nice and flat we will clean we will use our toothbrush and after cleaning we will mask the board around the BGA pads because some of them is scratched and soldering BGA to a scratch board is not very wise. We're adding the mask. Filling up the copper with the mask. Wherever it needs. We will cure the UV mask. With the UV light. And we will do a scratching to a UV mask that is higher than it should to flatten the UV mask. And after that, we will deal with the Super IO. The Super IO BGA chip will be cleaned with our soldering pen and wick, but it is better for us to place it on a holder or something that can hold it. For not working all over the bench, because we are seeking the IC. Okay, cleaning a bit, some more flux and more wick. 
it's not necessary so we will try to find the stencil that it fits I think that this is good this is not for the specific, specific chip but it will do the job as we can see the pads clearly now we must uh, find uh, our soldering paste and uh, spread the paste to fill all the holes and use our hot air gun in uh, 317 celsius in order for the paste to transform to solder balls and uh, make the chip ready for the soldering so soldering paste is at hand and let's go apply filling all the holes wiping the excess solder solder paste to be nice and clean and here is the turn of the hot air gun the soldering balls were created by the hot air gun we're trying to remove the chip we'll turn it over we will remove the excess solder balls that became a mess around it we are good all balls are in place we will clean a bit and make a reflow in order for the balls to be even and better placed on the pad adding some flux use our hot air gun with though with low airflow you can understand that and now as the balls are reflowed we will clean up a bit and we are ready to solder the super io in place apply some flux align the chip we will try to align the chip better the better way is to check the borders because there are borders around the sides of the chip We're trying to solder it in place. I cannot see very clearly the lines, the borders of the chip. So it is time to adjust the light better, in a better place, in a better way for me to see. It is much better now so we will solder the ic in place we can see the borders now when i'm trying to align it better it doesn't want to go to its right place I think it is, but it's a BGA chip, so we, we will determine if the balls are in the right place when we see it under the microscope in a vertical way in order to, to see the BGA 
balls that way. You cannot see it very clearly, but I can see it with the microscope and the lamp. It's not what we wanted, so we are reflowing again. We'll poke the chip in order to determine if it's okay. Likewise, the chip is in its place. We are cleaning up with the isopropylic and toothbrush. And I think we are good to go. Let's check now with uh, our charger without pressing the Super I.O. Removing the toothbrush from the desk. Let the board cool down a bit. And now we will plug the charger and check. The amperage is not rising because we have no we have stuck a stuck camera in our power supply. Wait a minute. Now it's good. I think we will plug the power supply without pressing, you see. It is working. The Super IO is doing its job. It is uh, pulling high. It is letting the ACOK to be pulled high. So, what we must do is connect the board to its chassis and uh, check if we are, we are having a display or not. And that's uh, what we will do right now. Everything is connected. We will uh, plug the charger. It will uh, draw amps. That's a good sign. Let's go and see if we are having a display. And a display is good. So we are good too. That was it. That was the repair as you saw. If you like this video, consider like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. See you in another repair. Bye.